non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Booger, of the nine teams with new head coaches, which one has the best chance to make the playoffs next season? Kev, I think it's the Minnesota Vikings. And you look at Kevin O'Connell, like he's got to be salivating like your stylist when he sees your hair because he knows he's got a plethora of things to work with. If you look at Minnesota, you got Kirk Cousins, you got Dalvin Cook, you got Justin Jefferson, you got Adam Thielen, you got so many weapons. Now you put a guy that's been in that Sean McVay offense, you bring him into Minnesota, and now you have an opportunity to tutor Kirk Cousins and welcome in to uh, Purple Access, which, of course, is part of the Purple Daily family. Zolgad, Chip Scoggin, Star Tribune sports columnist, Declan Goff, executive producing, as always, brought to you by our friends at Surly Brewing. Surly is, well, as Chip and I both say, it's the best beer in town. Might be the best beer in the whole doggone world. TCL televisions as well. Enjoy more. Enjoy your sports with a TCL, the ultimate and sports experience is watching a game on a TCL TV. All right, Chip Scoggins, let's start with what Booger said right there. Do you agree that the Vikings of the nine uh, coaches that we're going to see on sidelines who will be new come next September, do you agree that the Vikings should be atop that list of playoff teams? Um. So that was he, he asked them which team, which of the nine, nine should be playoff teams? Not yet. Well, no, he, he said which has the best chance. So, Best so chance. Like of the jobs, which one is the most is the temple? So we set. had what do we have? We have the Bears. We had you got you got the, the Dolphins. Broncos, the Dolphins, Dolphins. Are interesting. Brian Flores did Dolph- a nice job. Yeah. Well, the NFL still screwed up. The Broncos you know. are intriguing. The, the Broncos, yeah. I I I don't know why I agree with them. I don't know that I agree with that because I think they have so much work to do defensively yep. to just get back to average. Um and you know, what? Are you, tell me what you're doing at quarterback, and then I think I could probably answer that a little bit better. But um, juicy. But it, you know, it is interesting that, and I've been saying this for a long time now. When when people look at the Vikings, they tend to look at the top five and not the full fifty three. Yes, because you see, oh my gosh, Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, yes, Adam Thielen, Daniel Hunter, Harrison Smith. I mean, you look at their stars, and you think this team is. Should be really good, yep. but I think if you really sit down and analyze their their fifty three, you realize there's a lot of holes in there and a lot of work they have to, to do. The defense too, uh, it, it's certainly been discussed and it should be, but the defense to what you're talking about was really bad. Like yep. like like it wasn't like well, I think if you just tweak this here, um, the defense personnel wise, I mean, Chip, the last two years they couldn't stop the run. Mm-hmm. And and if you can't stop the run, you're done. And so, despite so, despite making a bunch of free agents exactly uh, moves to stop the run, that was exactly. like their whole focus. It, right. So I I don't agree because I think that the Vikings and this is to me not not bad. I think that there is some very necessary reconstruction to do. So so like I don't think O'Connell is just going to step in and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, crazy. This thing's great, set to go. You're right. They've got some very good players and and some talented players. But as far as the entire roster goes and the depth chart goes, um, among the the nine teams that change coaches, I wouldn't put the Vikings in the top three. Like as far as the whole thing, I'd yeah, I think a lot Denver, of it. Miami. I mean, there's a, a yeah. Few. I think a lot of it. They look at uh, their offensive skill positions and then also under the assumption they keep. Kirk Cousins, which I think at this point probably is the right assumption. Um, I, I, I think I lean more and more that that O'Connell will want to either play it out this year or more likely extend him a couple years to get that cap number down and then just try to, uh, f- you know, whether you're drafting a guy this year, next year, whatever, get right. the do sort of what Green Bay did. But it is interesting. I was looking at they, the Vikings sent out their, um, their coaching staff, the, the hires, Judd, boy, he put a lot of experienced coaches on that defense, mm-hmm. right? Donatel, mm-hmm. Mike Patton, the defensive line coach that's coming over from the Bears. Looks like he's been uh, – his name for is slipping my mind now. Um, Rumpf, I think is his name. Um, but I, I was looking at his bio. Right yep. Sounds like he's been a Chris defensive Rumpf. line coach. 
Chris Front, yeah, sounds like he's been a, a defensive line coach for a long time. So, uh, smart move. It's not not a surprise. I think we've talked about that that they would probably really get some experienced veteran coaches over there. Um, and the Mike Pettin hire is interesting. I mean, he's just assistant coach, assistant to head coach, right? Is he? Yes. Is he's not coaching a position? Is he no. gonna? I'm curious to see like what that entails. Yeah, and and are, are he and Ed gonna clash a little bit? I mean, like like they both will probably want to play the three four, but there's definitely yeah. d- different permeations of that defense. So yeah, it's an interesting move, and um, that see so so with Petten and and Ed, it seems like a lot of potential cooks in in the kitchen. So I'm curious if they already established that they basically run the same version of the three, four or what the yeah. thinking is there. Well, is, is Petten, I mean, Don tells the, the defense coordinator. So I assume he's running the scheme and running the, the defense. So but I mean, Petten's going to have thoughts on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's why I'm curious to kind of know, yeah. like, what is his role? Like when, when O'Connell brought him in here, I, I'd, I'd love to hear like what he sold him on his, his role being, is it him? Uh, you know, I don't think he's gonna have much to do with the offense. So is he not co-defensive coordinator, but is he is he game management? Kind of big... Game management could be, maybe. Could be. Yeah, it could be. I, I, I mean, is he gonna I... Yeah, that's was, big. is he gonna be a guy that's up in the box that's kind of helping him on game day to hey situations you need that. and chipper, you need that now. Yeah, that's oh, huge. Yeah. yeah, and that's especially if you I mean heck he's never called plays, even O'Connell. So um I assume it'd be interesting to see. I assume they'll come up today at his press conference. Like, is, is that going to be something he wants to do? Or is he going to leave that? Cause he's still going to hire an offense coordinator here yes. in the next few days. I guess he's interviewing somebody that was on staff out there. Um, yes. So is that person going to call plays? Is he going to call plays? Is um, I bet he calls plays, right? That I mean, he's coming from a system where the head coach called the plays. So I, right. I assume that's what he's going to do. That would be my uh, guess. But, um, but it's not the worst idea if he has a guy who's been a head coach, you know, helping him on game day with, with, uh, you know, game situations. And that's absolutely, in my opinion now, imperative, right? Like, like yeah. Zimmer Fleck. I mean, Flex, the poster yeah. child for why hasn't that been healthcare. a, why has, why hasn't that become a, like a, a paid, uh, position, uh, game manager? Phil and I have talked about that a lot, and I don't know why. Now, McVay did, and why I think Petten might help here, or at, at least there will be a, a game day um, help for for Kevin, is this. Um, McVay, if you recall back, I believe it was the first time that the Rams went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Patriots. Uh, for Former golfer assistant Jed Fish. Yeah, was his game day guy, and oh, like really? he would okay. be his timeout guy. Like, call a timeout. Don't call a timeout. Do do this. Um, was that which, his only? Role? I think that I think that was his big, his big role was on game okay. day Not to his only role, help yeah. manage the game. Um, but I used to sort of laugh about that. Not anymore, man. There is so much, and if and if if Kevin's going to call plays, yeah. I think that he definitely one thousand percent should have somebody who can be in his ear. Um, and so he, he, he's not trying to call timeouts when he shouldn't be, or just, I mean, we've seen that because, because Zim could have used one <laughs> and, and flex is smart. I mean, yeah, flex, not, flex, could, yeah. flex is not a dumb guy, right? His yeah. game day management's awful. Well, it, it's, you know, there's, there's, I'm sure there's that thought that, Hey dude, we're paying you whatever, eight, $9 million, whatever NFL coaches make. This is, this is your job to be able to manage a game. I mean, you should, you shouldn't need help to do this. This is why we hire you as the head coach. And I get that, but I also understand that, man, there's a lot of stuff going on on a, on a game and the emotion, the yes. worrying about this, you're worrying about, especially if you're play, calling plays, Yes, you're probably locked in. Okay. What am I doing next? And maybe not thinking as clearly as and next series. I, yeah. It, yeah. And so I think it's, I think, I think it'd just be smart if it, if organization said, we're going to have a guy sit up there and, and in the heat of the moment when things are kind of going sideways or, getting harried that he he can help the head coach with game management. I don't, you know, I don't think that's a, a knock on a coach that yeah. would need that kind of help challenges too. Right. Cause I mean, yeah. there is nothing worse yeah. than Zim 
looking at the replay on the jumbotron, getting pissed off and throwing yeah. the red flag. <laughs> it's like that. No, my, no my, reason. My, yeah. No, don't do that. Don't throw. Don't go Ticey. Don't throw the red flag unless you, you are positive about what you just saw. So, yeah, yeah. I, I will not knock this guy at all if, yeah. if he employs and gets help. And I'm not a huge proponent of of the head coach calling offensive plays. I think it eats up a ton of time. But if he's going yeah. to, then you 100% have to get help with clock, replays, all of that stuff. Yeah, because and you know, I I, I guess it doesn't it doesn't bother me if the if the coach uh, calls the plays because that's sort of you know. But I want you to manage the game a little bit too. That that, if, that but was if, my but thing. If, but if it interferes with, or you can tell that it's causing the problems with their game management in terms of just being distracted, throwing challenge flags just because they're mad. <laughs> you know, they like, like we saw that from, time. We saw from Zimmer too. I mean, there are times where Zimmer yeah. you could tell he was just mad, and so he threw it. So it's like that's not a good reason, right? No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pouting does not pouting does not constitute <laughs> costing no. yourself potentially a timeout. I'm no. mad. Where's my challenge flag? Yeah. No, Mike, don't well, let's do throw it. this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm curious to kind of see what Petten uh, – it's an interesting staff. I mean, you got some young guys on there. Uh, Keenan, keeping Keenan McCardo, I think it was a smart one because obviously yes. wide receivers really liked him, and it seems like everything you heard is like he's a really good coach, a wide receivers coach, so that was smart. Um, and so it's – you know, Judd, in a lot of ways, this is uh, – goes a long way in determining how successful Kevin O'Connell is going to be. Who do you hire? What kind of staff do you have? Absolutely. You know, I mean, Absolutely. yeah, we'll, 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 how he just, his big picture vision and uh, puts out fires and handles crises, big and small, and all that stuff is, um, he'll learn on the job. I mean, you can't, nothing prepares you for that, but um, getting the right staff and getting a good staff in is, is, um, you know, just so important to any coach. I do sense that the defensive moves, um, at least for now, m might mirror what McVay did too. Because if you go back when McVay got the Rams job at 32, mm -hmm. right? He yep. he brought he brought in Wade F Phillips as his first DC, and and the defense was really good. And I think Wade lasted like two or three years until it, it was clear that that McVay probably had gotten his confidence and knew more. Mm -hmm. And and then they transitioned in the DC role to younger guys, and so yeah. I'm curious if 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 Donatel and Petten are are here for a cup of coffee to help out, and then if things go according to plan, you start to transition to you know a, a DC who is I don't know 38 or something like that. Could be, yeah. I mean, it makes sense that you know you're. 37 years old, first time head coach. You got a lot on your mind um, to hire a couple really established veteran defensive guys, coordinator and Patton in his role. So he doesn't have to worry as much about that. I mean, if he had hired a young defense coordinator that was his first time, you would, I think you would probably be constantly worrying about uh, having to oversee that or help with that or, or just making sure that person knew what he can put those defensive guys over there. I mean, you look at the veteran guys that he's hired in there. I mean, it's, it's clear he thought, let's get established guys who, who've done this for a long time. So I don't mess. I'm not saying he, he has to ignore it, but. Yeah, don't ignore it. He don't doesn't have to ignore it. Don't do that. Exactly. Yeah, we've been down there. But I think he, <laughs> but, it, but I also think it gives him confidence that they know what the heck they're doing and he doesn't have to like sit in defensive meetings all the time to make sure they know what they're doing. Absolutely. Uh, so QBs wise that it's uh, if, if you go through the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine guys that, that they announced as assistants today, it's interesting yeah. to point out that Chris O'Hara was hired yeah. as, as quarterbacks coach and Jared Johnson, assistant QBs coach. I wonder if that one is to, is to work with guys like Mond. Cause there's no question in my mind, Kellen Mond got for the most part ignored, right? Yes. Yeah. Like you're not getting well, reps, uh, you know, Koobs and the QBs coach busy with, with Kirk. And then, and it's a very savvy and smart move. If they, they said it's high time that if we do potentially have backup 
quarterbacks, especially young ones to develop, that they if they get their own handler or person that can help them. Yeah, because do you think even people internally have any idea what Kellen Mond no. is at this point? Zero. Like, is he the whole draft class? I have no clue. Yeah, is That's he quarterback of the future? Is he can he can he not play? Is this I mean, so you have to figure out what the heck you have there. And while also if, if Cousins is your guy, I mean you're getting you know, he, he's doing the game plan and all that, but you you yeah. have to figure out what you have in Kelamond, right? And so I think it's smart that they uh the Jared Johnson, um I mean he's a young guy that young coach that really hasn't had a that's what I'm saying. Experience. He can help yeah. him. exactly. I, I think it's it's a pretty savvy idea that they have that uh, find someone to figure out. I mean, cause you, you know, a third round pick's not a first round pick, but it's not a throwaway. It's not just a flyer in the seventh round where you say, well, this is, and he's a quarterback. Find he's out. A quarterback. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Find you have out. to, by the end of this year, you need to find out, okay, yes, no, or we're drafting yeah. someone else. I mean, cause it can't just be, well, we don't know yet. You know, it can't be that anymore. And, and Chip expand that statement for almost the entirety of the 2021 draft class. Like mm-hmm. I, I keep going th- through that. It is remarkable how little we know that draft class was, yeah. was essentially held hostage by Mike. Mm-hmm. Darisaw we saw, and I think he'll, he'll be good, a productive player. Yes. I yeah. like Darisaw, but yeah. beyond that, like how much do Wyatt Davis, Wyatt Davis That's the one could heard. be your starting right guard. He could be your starting right guard. For the life of me, I don't understand what happened there. And all we heard really was, you know, I know he was injured early in camp and that he came in a little overweight. Well, it's a little yeah, overweight. Okay. I mean, so he can't play the entire he's year. He's a lineman. He's supposed to be fat, yeah. by the way. <laughs> I know. So, it, I mean, that one just, considering all the issues they had, that he couldn't even, in a pinch, get a sniff of the field. So I, I don't know. You know, you're basically reevaluating him to see. Like, reevaluating, I'm evaluating. He's he's a rookie, or, or, or yeah, like no, with this new staff, you're trying to yes. figure out like why did he not? Why did this guy not play when you had all kinds of interior line issues? Uh, what what is going on? So, um, but no, I mean, Cam Bynum, we saw you know what a little bit. I mean, he showed Baltimore when 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 Harrison was out, yeah. but. Yeah, I mean, there's. It was like they punted on that entire draft. Mike wouldn't play. Other than Darisaw. Yeah, Mike wouldn't. Mike, Mike held them. It 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 was as if Mike could tell the divorce with Rick was coming, and mm-hmm. like he had he he like took the kids and took them off to a different country yeah. or something. Yeah, it's like Mike. I like you. You got to at least play some. It's fine not to play them all. Totally get that. Okay. Yeah. But but when but, Rick's. But when Rick's whole thing is, I drafted 15 more guys, and you're like, yeah, yeah, you did, but I'm not yeah. playing 14. I'll play one problem. of them. Yes. Yeah, I'll play one. Yeah. That's a massive problem. And then complain, you know, well, Darisaw's hurt. I was expecting him to be hurt. Okay, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, that's – yeah, and that's what's going to be interesting to see uh, a fresh set of eyes yes. on the entire roster because, I mean, there might be guys here that, that can play that Zim just never gave him a chance because they were rookies and he – Yes. They wanted, you know, we know he, how he feels about rookies, but – um so it'll be, um, you know, OTAs and minicamp normally make me yawn. <laughs> no, but, this but this year, year but this not year it feels year. like this year it feels like you may it may just be a total departure from uh, you know the norm from in terms of you're going to find out about some guys that we haven't seen. Yeah, and they're actually going to play, and and that's where I do think that. That's where there might be some incentive um, to make some changes as as far as vets go, be, because like there are probably guys on the current roster that can play that weren't trusted, and mm-hmm. if they exist, guess what? Then I can clear out a guy or or two. Um, but I mean, the, yeah, I have starting with the combine March first. I haven't been this excited for yeah. for a Viking spring and summer in forever. Yeah. Cause you're right. There are so many questions now that, that are going to uh, basically by the time that, that you get to opening day in September that are going to be answered and have to be. And how many, how much do you think this first year will be seeing what you have versus shaking the tree and, and really disrupting the, the roster versus 
you've had this whole draft class and some young guys who really haven't been able to show what they have. Let's right. see that for a year before you really strip down the the roster. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be gradual. I think it's going to be a too. lot. I do too. I think, I think it's going to be a lot like and and p- people get um, mad when I do this. I think it's going to be a lot like what Bill Guerin did, because like he didn't c- come in and blow things up. He's like, oh no. no no, I'm going to wait to see, and then said, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. Which is why I think that there is a better chance that if Cousins forces the, their hand contractually, I think there's a better chance, the more I think about this, they'll let him play the contract out, which will suck cap-wise for a, a year. Because if you extend him, you're committing. And I don't know that these guys are going to want to commit, nor do I know that they need to at this point in time. Yeah, the only thing with that is if 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 he does that and you play one year, will you have to cut a couple guys that you wouldn't have if he... probably. I don't like it, but I'm just saying, yeah, it, he he's in he's in a pretty good position to make your life difficult. Oh, yeah, if he wants to, yeah, oh. which is which is you know Rick and Rob's fault. At the, yeah, but and my point about Kirk is is this too. The one thing I don't want to do because Kirk is not going to take a cheap deal, and Kirk no, does not he... sign long term contracts. He likes two th- three years. The yes. one thing I don't I don't want to do, Chip is I don't want to be doing purple access in 2025 with you and talking about this again. Like now it's come yeah. to pass now, Kirk, yeah. cause, cause you know, cause they backed up the cap hit to then like at yeah. some point in time, you have to be free, free yourself of that. And I would, if I had to, I'd prefer to do that through 2022 than to find myself back here in 2025. And that's where, so much of this, Judd, will depend on their scouting department. Like, what do they think about the the, the quarterback class of next year? Not this one, because I don't think there's – I don't think you do it this year, but next year. And yeah. do they keep that – does he keep that scouting department intact, or do we make changes uh, – does he make changes you, – you don't this year because you're into the – Post-draft. In your bowl and all that stuff that's already May. going on. You're way too far down the road. Yes, sir. <clears throat> But that's where that's where you know if you when you're talking to them you're like, wait man, there's four quarterbacks coming out next year that we would be happy, you know. Yeah. Then then you say, well, let's just have one more year and we'll just, you know, or you do what Green Bay did, you do it for three years, draft your quarterback, let him sit for a year, and then you're, you know, and then you and then you turn the page then. So I think they have options. I I mean I really think this uh, this new regime has options in terms of it's complicated. Right. I mean, it's it's you're going to have to make some hard choices no matter which way you go in terms of not only cousins, but just the effect it's going to have on your roster and who can stay and who can go, who's going to have to take a pay cut. Right. But. um, But there's definitely you could make a viable argument for. Really, any of them, any of those three choices they have trade, sit still or or extend. Yeah. And I I do think that. They'll definitely make some changes from a roster standpoint, but I do think that they'll they'll probably slow cook it a bit, see see what they have, see who would restructure, who wouldn't. Uh, but I think a year from now, it'll get the combine and March and all of that good stuff in 2023. I think will be very interesting, more so probably than this one. Well, yeah, because you can't, like, you can't put in all the different things that you're talking about, like changes maybe in analytics and in, in uh, you know, philosophy and the way you scout and draft. You, you can't do that in one month, <laughs> you know. No, I mean that's and, and nor I mean, should you and try. The, and nor should you try because you're you're. I mean, you're already heavily invested in the scouting for this draft, so it's like you can't just disrupt all that. So it's going to take, it'll take them a year, but I agree like next year is when it really could see some uh, like the massive overhaul that we, we think that's, you know, that that's going to come. Yeah. And it, it, as far as the potential uh, changes to the scouting department, those ordinarily come after a new GM's first draft. So yes. we could see changes in May or so. 
um, yeah, which, summer, which right, happens. Yeah. Like that's not yeah. a big. That's they no. guys bring in the, their own scouting departments and things like that. Um, well, you should be you should be able to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But but I mean, we fall in love here with. Oh, you can't get rid of that guy. I mean, I heard he was yeah. good. It's like no ch changes occur. Um, sure. So K KOC is going to be introduced as the tenth coach. Uh, we're recording this around twelve thirty on Thursday, four o'clock central on Thursday. What do you think Chip Scoggins is the most important thing uh, that he can say or, or get across to the fan base? Um, I mean, we're going to hear a lot about collaboration right? in, in that to me, I'm most interested in, I, I don't think we're going to get anything definitive, but quarterback, I mean, the quarterback situation to me, that's everything, you know, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, he's coming from a, you know, I'm sure he'll spend time talking about the things he learned under McVay and the championship culture and what it takes to win the Super Bowl. And and, and I agree with that. I mean, that, that stuff's important. And I'm sure he's going to say collaboration is a big part of that and empowering players. And that's what everybody's going to want to hear. But it's a quarterback. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like, what does your relationship with Cousins mean in terms of, uh, you know, getting – if there's more to get out of him or, or uh, that type of thing. So to me, it's again, I don't know that we're going to get specifics today because you don't typically get those in the introductory press conference, but that to me right. is the, the most uh, important question for him. I'm curious about this um, same position, but not so much just Kirk. I'm curious in what he believes or, or is willing to talk about the formula for developing one is mm -hmm. Be because the thing with Mike in retrospect now is aside from Teddy, it's amazing how much that position got ignored. Like it was just sort of there and, and it's, ah, yeah. I don't really coach quarterbacks. I'll talk to, you know, all right. In year four, I'll talk to Kirk once a, a week. Um, I'm curious what the, what the recipe is in a guy like O'Connell's mind for how you really go about developing this spot because i mean it is now probably in, in all of sports the most like difficult position as far as expectations mm -hmm. mentality what's expected um so i real i i think that there's a ton there to un unearth about o'connell's philosophies mm -hmm. um and we didn't i don't think scratch the surface with mike well no i mean you think about it, it's like even go back to the Case Keenum year, like when he stepped in, it's like, well, he had a horseshoe there. It's like, <laughs> like you know, it was it's a great never, line, but exactly. It was a great line, but it's like, I'm not sure yep. that's what you would say about your quarterback, that he had a horseshoe, you know, in certain situations. And so, I, yeah, just never, that was just a major, major missing component to his entire regime here, just the, the connection. And I understand part of it is you coach defense, they play offense, and so you're you're not spending a ton of time I mean, on a given day when your defense is off doing their thing in their meeting rooms and all that, and if you're running the defense and the offense is doing that, I mean, how much overlap are you going to have with your quarterback other than practice? And so, right. That's, but that's where I think um, you didn't have to have an offensive guy, but it does help because there's, there's no more important relationship than the head coach and the quarterback. I mean, right. just, and so they're going to be together all the time, right? And so, um, but I agree, like, whether it's Kirk or, you know, when you turn the page and someone else is like, what is the, what are you looking for? Yes. And like, how do you develop them? Especially young yeah. ones. Like, like there's yeah. so much here. Um, what's the, what's the key to, to taking a really good piece of clay and molding it? Yeah. That's because what that's what, do. because post Kirk, I, I would be stunned if they go get a free agent, it's going to be they a draft. Yeah, it's going to be a, a kid that you draft and develop, and so that with this regime is going to be a big, uh, a big thing. All right, Chip. Before we go, the weekend is coming. What mm -hmm. will Chip? What is going to be uh, after a long week of work at the Star <laughs> Tribune? What is going to be in Chip Scoggins' hand this weekend? Certainly furious. Um, I go for the bigger ones. I go for the the tall boys. <laughs> I can't get them at my liquor store. I'm very disappointed. The tall I, boys I are nice. A, the I wild a, has them. Yeah, the, the tall boys. That's kind of my. Uh, that's my choice. Yeah, the four packs. Um, you have to make more beer runs when you do that. That's okay. But, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Declan Harris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. somebody can play. Who am I'm I to Declan Harris? Well, uh, Chipper, you were you were uh, you were in Kansas. Any any Surly and Rock Chalk was? Did you find any Surly in Kansas this uh, I did weekend? not. No. I did not. There was no Surly there, uh. which was yeah. There, there probably is somewhere there, but it, not in the uh, sure. barbecue barbecue joints that I wound up in. There. Oh, that sounds like fun. Funny. That sounds yeah. like fun. All right, Chip. Talk to you next week. Take care and enjoy your Surly Furious this weekend. All right, boys. We will see ya.